Good afternoon everybody. Aaron here with AV Astronomy and today's video we're going to be talking about double exposures and how that applies to shooting nightscapes, night sky images. Uh, this video is actually inspired by a Twitter user who was uh, asking some more detail and instruction on how to actually do this. I think a lot of people who try to image like the moon for instance and don't have a lot of experience doing that rely on the cameras metering system to take a good exposure but and that's where things start to fall apart see cameras are not created really to out of the box image things like the moon and, and do it properly and the reason for that is because cameras have an exposure metering system that is set to 80 percent gray and that's what it's looking for it evaluates the entire scene of an image okay and it tells the sensor okay this is the ex this is the exposure you need to use in order to get this scene to have an 80% gray tone. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, here's a this is a 80% gray card. This is why we use 80% gray cards for white balance because it helps achieve that proper balance of light. Same thing applies when you're imaging the moon. However, if you rely on that alone, you're going to wind up with a washed out moon because it tends to expose for you know if you got a black background and all you've got is this little round white blob. Um, it's it's gonna overexpose every time so let's go inside here and uh, take a look at Photoshop and also we're gonna take a look at some camera settings here later this evening I'll show you guys uh, live what that looks like and how to take manual shots two manual shots you can do more and stack them if you want but you know with these quick exposures I don't think it's necessary to stack images but you certainly can um, to get a little bit of extra smoothness in your pictures but what we'll do is we'll take a shot of the moon manually to get it properly exposed and at the same focal length as the shot of the background or the foreground, whatever it is you're trying to put in the foreground, also at the same focal length. But you'll do that at a different exposure because naturally the background at a night, in a night scene is going to be much darker than the, the bright target such as the moon. So let's go take a look inside and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like on the computer. Okay, so let's take a look at Photoshop here, guys. Um, pull up these two files, these two shots from last night. And let's slap these together. So this was the shot I took that exposed for the halo, for that ring. Um, it was pretty wide. I couldn't quite get it fully in the field of view, but anyway best I could get out of that there and then this is the image that I took of the moon that was exposed properly for the moon so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open both of these files up here okay so first thing we want to do is select the portion of this image that we want to superimpose over the other one. Now back in the day, and when I mean back in the day, I'm talking like 20 years ago, um, some of the last film cameras to come out, the Canon, I remember it, I, I used to use a uh, Canon Elon 7, and it had a built-in feature for double exposure, which was really awesome. What it would do is uh, it would take one picture and then instead of advancing the film to the next shot it would leave it on there you could recompose your shot change focal lengths or whatever to kind of get that cool effect you're going for and then take another shot and it would put both images on the same uh, section of that 35 millimeter film but nowadays of course with digital you got to do it in post-processing but anyway so what I did is selected about this portion of the of the moon here okay and we're gonna cut this out we're gonna feather this at 200 pixels and the reason why I feathered it like that because we want this to have a smooth transition here uh, so that it blends in nicely with the other one you may want to play around with that setting but 200 seemed to work pretty well for me so let's go ahead and do that copy this control C and we're gonna click on this file make sure that this is active and hit control V and paste that right on top now of course uh, this is not the finished image. You've got to make some adjustments here. So make sure this icon is active, okay, the move tool, and then using the arrow keys 
And you may want to lower the opacity here a little bit just so you can see a little better where the center of that moonshot was. Okay, again, make sure that's active. You can drag it and then eyeball it. That's about centered. And the scale is still accurate. Notice um, because I took both of these at the same focal length, this is, this is exactly how it appeared to me um, when I was looking at it up in the sky. So the next thing to do here is to blend this a little bit better so it's not such a harsh blend. So what we're gonna do is create a layer mask right here. Okay, I'm gonna click that. And then we're going to click on this layer. We're gonna copy it, Control A, Control C, Alt click, Alt left click on this one, okay, on the mask here, and then Control V. And that pastes a mask of this image on top of that. And now you can look, see how smoother that is now? And if you wanna take this a little further to smooth out or kind of adjust certain parts of the exposure, you can pull up curves, Control M. And if you drag this down this way, it gives a little more contrast around it, but you don't wanna to go too far. You'll notice that dark spot there. It actually, the way I had it defaulted here, blended pretty nicely. You might even go a little brighter. It just depends on personal preference here, but I think really right about there is good hit okay and that's it i mean it was it's as simple as that you know at this point you would just flatten your layer so you go to layer flatten image and now you've got a double exposed image um and this works for all sorts of stuff i mean this is definitely a a, a good one to use for the moon and if you really want to have some fun with it you know kind of make some nightscape art you can you can have a nice foreground shot, you know, be it the woods, a river, or mountains or something, and then zoom in a little bit more on the moon to get it a little bit larger in scale. And, uh, and it just has a really cool kind of otherworldly effect. So you can get really creative with that, but that simple procedure there that I just showed you applies to, applies to that as well. So on the Photoshop end, that's all there is to it. So what I wanna do now though is actually just to give you a visual, because I'm a visual learner, if you're like me, I like to see how things are done. So we're gonna go outside this evening here and we're going to take a look at how these, this, these pictures actually look uh, framed up in a camera at night and how to adjust the dial on manual to get the proper exposure that you need. So let's go do that. All right, so I've got my DSLR pointed at the moon. Let's bring up the live view. And as you can see, on program mode, the exposure, we'll or take a snapshot here, this is on program mode. Let's look at that, zoom in. It's blown out, and that's very typical of camera systems because again, it's trying to expose for 80% uh, gray in the overall scene, right? So what we're gonna do, slip this on over to manual, and we're gonna zoom in like this okay let's scoot on over go 10 times there we go and let's adjust this dial until the moon looks like the way you want it which that right there looks a lot better and that stead that setting is f7.1 at 1 250th of a second at ISO 400 which is certainly what your camera would not expose that for but let's go ahead and take a snapshot of that. And there you go. Let's zoom in and take a look at it, inspect it. And as you can see, it's much better exposed. You could even go maybe a half a stop or a third a stop darker if you wanted to. Um, and you know, you could use something like a neutral density filter on here too, uh, to get a little bit more contrast in the moon itself. But it, that same process you would use to let's say, let's go back to the screen, the uh, live view mode here. I don't know if you can see it, but let's say you want to expose for the clouds that are underneath it. You would obviously need to brighten this up to get those clouds. And it's just a thin strip. I don't think they're in the field of view right now. Let me see if I can get these in the field of view. Okay, those clouds are moving, but you see them there at the bottom corner? 
because <laughs> I don't have this on a track tripod, but you're going to want to adjust your exposure accordingly because those clouds are a lot dimmer than the moon. And, and it's those situations where you need to either do some kind of HDR mode, which some cameras have that built in, but not a lot, not all of them do. And in situations where they don't, this is definitely the way to do it. Also, when you do your own HDR, you have more control over your image scene. You just got more control over the image um, as far as how long you want that exposure to be and that sort of thing. Whereas if it, you use the inbuilt HDR, it's using a pre-programmed set of parameters. So not to say that it doesn't work well in some situations, but usually doing something like this manually is going to pan out the best for you. So that's how we do this on camera. On the This is how we change the settings on the camera to give you that kind of full HDR look at the moon. Well guys, that concludes our video for this evening. If you felt like you got something out of it, please hit the like button, subscribe, so that you don't miss out on any future videos that I'll be covering tutorials, gear, and imaging sessions. And until next time, clear skies.